Hi, in this video you learn how to construct X-bar and R control charts. And then once we construct them, we'll use them to determine if there's any out of control points on the process that we're studying. So here's the example we're going to look at today. Um, a component part for a jet, jet aircraft engine is manufactured by an investment casting process. The vane opening on this casting is an important functional parameter of the part. Use X-bar and our control charts to assess the statistical stability of the process. Okay, so we have this part on the engine, and the part, the, the parameter of interest on the part is the vane opening. So the way that we're going to see if this uh, process is in statistical control is we're going to take a subgroup, um, perhaps every hour of size 5, and then for that subgroup of 5, we're going to find its sample mean and its sap sample range. So imagine here, so sample number 1, um, I like to think of it as a subgroup. So the first hour, let's say, um, you, you take a random sample of 5 parts from the production process. And you go ahead and list those. Um, part 1 is 33, uh, part 2, 29. This is the vein opening measurement, all the way up to X5, 33. And here, the statistic of interest is the sample mean. So we take these five observations, and we average them, and we get 31.6. The sample range is also another parameter of interest. Um, and the way we get that, that's just the max minus the min of our subgroup. So the max in this case is 33, and the min is 29. So the sample range for this subgroup is 4. OK, let's say the next hour, hour two, we go ahead and take another random sample of five parts. And we again do the same thing. We, we um, take the measurement, so part 1, 33, part 2, 31, part 3, 35. Um, these are vein opening measurements. Um, for that subgroup of five, we find the sample mean. And then we also find the sample range. The range, again, is the max minus the min. Here, the max is 37, and the min is 31. So the max minus the min is 6. So we did this for 20 different subgroups, um, or 20 different samples. And each time, we get a sample mean and a sample range. And these are the values, then. Um, these are the x bars that I want to plot on my x bar chart. Um, and these are the sample ranges that I want to plot on the R chart. Okay, so on the next page, uh, I want to go ahead and show you not only what the values of the upper and lower control limits are, but how to actually derive, derive them and calculate them. So the center line of the X bar chart is just the mean of the sample means, which uh, we call X bar bar. So um, let's go back to this page. If you take all of these means and sum them up and then divide by 20, you'll get the overall mean for all the values, or you'll get the, 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 the mean of the sample means, which we call x bar bar. So I already did this measurement. I took all those values, added them up, divided by 20, and got uh, 33.32. OK. Now the upper and lower control limits um, are a little bit confusing the way that they're derived. So that's that's why I wanted to take a minute and do those. So we're going to start at the center line, x bar bar, and we're going to go up three standard deviations to get the upper control limit and down three standard deviations of the x bar chart to get um, the upper and lower control limits. So here we're going to add plus or minus three times sigma of x bar. I just don't want sigma of x because we're actually looking right at the x bar chart. So I want the standard deviation of the x bars. And so let's go ahead and uh, rewrite this again. Um, and we're going to replace, this is plus or minus, we're going to replace uh, sigma of x bar. So recall that sigma of x bar, then, is just the original sigma divided by, because it's an x bar, the square root of n, where here n is the subgroup size, which was 5. Now, we don't know the um, population standard deviation. So the best we're going to be able to do is estimate this. So I'm going to put a little hat on. The hat sigma signifies it's going to be an estimate. Now, one way to estimate sigma hat, there, there are a couple different ways, but one way to estimate sigma hat is with r bar. So to do this, we actually take r bar and we divide by an unbiasing constant. Now, these constants, there's uh, tables that we can use to find the values of these constants. They're unbiasing constants. 
And um, in this case, D2 is dependent on the sample size or the subgroup size, which is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this constant in for a minute and do a little bit more simpli simplification before I actually compute values. So let's do go ahead and sub in there for sigma hat. So x bar bar plus or minus 3 times sigma hat is r bar divided by d2. And we still have 1 over square root of n. So I'm just going to make this a little bit nicer by uh, what I'm going to do is collect my um, constant terms. So plus or minus 3. Um, well, we can go ahead and divide this by d2 times square root of n, and this is times r bar. OK, so this now, um, this value here is just a constant that depends on n. So instead of looking up d2 and then doing another calculation, um, we're just going to make this, a, this is just another um, control chart constant called a sub 2. So again, a sub 2 you would get from um, a control chart constant table, uh, often in the back of statistics books, definitely quality control textbooks, or, or easily to look on online, you'll easily be able to find the constant A2, a table for it. So at this point, um, let's go ahead, it's going to be x bar bar plus or minus A sub 2 times R bar. Now, I went ahead and calculated R bar earlier, too. So here's all my R's, my sample ranges. And R bar, then, is just the average. So I add all these up, divide by 20, and I get R bar. Um, in this case, R bar, I already calculated, R bar here is uh, 5.8. So we're good to go. Um, X bar bar was 33.32. And I went ahead and uh, put one of these uh, control chart tables for the constants on one of the slides. Here it is. Um, so X bar chart, these are the, the constants that I'm interested in. So we had a subgroup of size 5. And in that case, A2 is 0.577. So let's go back and replace that um, 0.577 times 5.8. And if I go ahead and do the addition part of this, I'll get the upper control limit, um, which I already did. That's approximately um, 36.67. And I also got the lower control limit by doing the subtraction. And that was approximately 29.97. OK, so now I know the center line of my process um, for the X bar chart is 33.32, the upper control limit 36.67, lower control limit 29.97. Now I built this uh, control chart in Minitab statistical software. and. Um, I, I entered all the data, the subgroup data that you saw um, on the first slide. And so what's being plotted in this chart is just the sample uh, average or the sample mean for the sub, first subgroup. Here's uh, x bar for the second subgroup. Here's the sample average for the third subgroup. And here you see the control limits that we calculated by hand. Um, x bar bar is just 33.32. Here's the upper control limit of the x bar chart. And here's the lower control limit that we already um, determined on the last page. Um, as you can see, too, there's four out of control points. In this case, they're out of control because they're beyond three standard deviations from the center line. So here's one of the out of control point points, and we have um, four of them. And these little numbers, one here, this is just Minitab's way of signifying you have a point out of control. And number one is just denoting what kind of out of control point it is. In this case, it's the, it's the type that's beyond three standard deviations from the center line. So in Minitab's language, that's what a one indicates. And there's other other ways that you can be out of control besides being beyond three control limits. But that's the only uh, issue we have in this particular process. So let's go back up and finish this. Um, let's go ahead and compute the uh, R control chart uh, values. Uh, the R center line is just going to be R bar. So we already found R bar for the X uh, bar chart. So R bar is just 5.8. OK, similarly to how we found the control limits for the X bar chart, um, we would do the same type of thing for the R chart. We'd start at R bar, the center line, and then we would go up three standard deviations of the ranges. 
again, if I did a little bit of manipulation, put in some constants, um, it would all simplify. And I'm just going to go to the simplified value for the upper control limit then. It's going to be the constant D4 times R bar. And again, D4 is just dependent on the sample size N. The lower control limit um, is R bar minus 3 times sigma of R. So this is going to be, again, I do some manipulation. I'm going to get this to be D3 times R bar. So now if I go ahead and um, go down there to that control chart table for constants, we can see for subgroup size n equals 5, D4 is 2.115, and D3 is actually 0. So let's go back up there and sub those in. This is going to be 2.115 times R bar, which is 5.8. And this is going to be 0 times 5.8, which is 0, which makes sense that 0 is the lower control limit on your R chart because the range is simply subtracting the max minus min, and you're not going to have um, you're not going to have a negative range. I mean, the lowest you can go is zero for the range. Um, and this value here, I went ahead and computed that. I got 12.27. And so these should match the control chart limits of the control charts I got in Minitab. Um, again, here's the X bar chart. On the R chart, um, our center line then is 5.8. Our upper control limit, 12.126. And again, maybe a little round off error between my calculation or mini tabs. And the lower control limit is 0. And here we see there's one out of control point on the R chart. So um, now what we're going to do, we can see which points are out of control. Once you find these points, and you can definitely point to them and say, oh, I know why that point was uh, occurring. I can actually track it back to the process and say, this was occurring for some known reason. There's some special cause that was creating that out of control point. If I can then verify that I knew how these were happening in the process and I could eliminate that problem, then I'm going to go ahead and remove those from my control chart. But I'm not removing them in the sense um, that I, I want to take them out so they're not in the picture anymore. I'm just going to remove them from the calculation of the X bar chart and the R chart limits. So down below, I actually asked Minitab to do that for me. Um, I took the following points out of um, the calculation, just out of the calculation for the upper control limit and lower control limit, and you can see now that the values have changed. The new center line then is uh, 33.21 the new upper control limit 36.1 and the new lower control limit 30.33 and you can see now that these don't match up with the ones above because I've eliminated these five points from my my computations of finding these control limits and the same same way down here once I exclude those five points my new R bar is 5 my upper control limit 10.57 and lower control limit start and continues to be at 0 so um, we've done a lot in this example. Um, first of all, let's just go back to the original data. Um, I collected the data in subgroups of size 5. For each of those subgroups, I calculated a sample mean and a sample range. And those are the values that are plotted on the control charts. Um, I actually derived the control chart limits. The center line of the X bar chart is X bar bar. I'm going to go up three standard deviations uh, of X bar and three standard deviations of X bar below. And I'm going to get my upper and lower control limits. In that process, I um, actually simplified with some estimations and some constants to make the calculation easier in the end. So all I had to do is look at a table for A2. Um, similarly for the R chart, um, R bar is the center line, and then again, I brought constants in to be able to, um, to calculate the upper and lower control limits. Um, I use statistical software to, to draw the control chart, but you can see all we did on the control chart is put the sample means for each subgroup. Um, so we could have easily done this by hand, and when we put in our upper and lower control limits, we can see which points are out of control with respect to being beyond three standard deviations. And again, why that, that worries us is, is you know any process that would have a point beyond three standard deviations, that's very odd. I mean, to go beyond three, there's almost, uh, you know, think of a normal curve. 
um, if I assume normality for the X bars, there's almost no data outside of three standard deviations. I mean, no no probability, um, no proportion of values outside of that range. So we say that's that's an odd and we highlight it because that's a very odd observation to be beyond three standard deviations. Um, so again, we remove these points from the calculation of the control limits and we get our final um, control charts with these as our defined limits. So I hope this helps with the X bar and our control charts. And uh, again, these uh, these constants uh, are available and you know again online you could find a variable control chart for these constants the factors are are widely um, disseminated and in, in the back of also statistics tasks okay so I hope this helps and we'll talk again soon